Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me? If you could, could you put uh, answer in the chat, please? All right, cool. Hey, Ria, how are you? All right, good to hear. I uh, hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, today, we're going to do a writing class that the topics, uh, we actually foregoed a class last week, and we're just going to be going over what we were supposed to do in that class, which is redundancy, parallels, parallelism, pronoun references, tenses, commas, dashes, colons, and apostrophes. So we're going to go over all that today. Uh, we're going to start in the in a little bit. We're going to first fill out the survey, the beginning survey. Uh, yes, th this is the writing class. Wednesday will be the math class, and Friday will be the reading class. The times uh, differ, so we send an email, depending on whatever the tutor is available. And we also post uh, an announcement on our Discord server. All right, so we'll get into it in uh, about three minutes. All right, so for the people that just joined, uh, we're just going through the survey. Today we'll be doing uh, the topics we were supposed to do last week, but that class was for GOAD. So we're just going to be going over the, those topics uh, today. Redundancy, parallelism, pronoun reference, tenses, commas, dashes, colons, and apostrophes. Uh, and before we start, we're just going to fill out the survey. So you guys do that, and we'll start when everyone fills it out.
All right, looks like everyone filled out the survey. So we'll just get started. You guys can hear me, right? All right, cool. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, there are seven in the webinar key, sure. All right. Uh, can you guys see my OneNote screen? All right, cool. So um, let's firstly let's just drive uh, dive right into this. And the first thing we're going to be going over is redundancy. All right. So on the SAT, redundancy questions will uh, you'll encounter like two types of uh, redundancy questions. One is that uh, words that essentially repeat themselves. And another is useless phrases. Sorry. That you can just get rid of. So let's, uh, let's use an example. So I'm gonna take this out. Uh, let's write out actually. So, an example. Our problem is that we're too self-aware. of ourselves so you can hopefully you guys can notice right away that there's a redundancy in this sentence and the reason being that self-aware the phrase self uh, that we're self-aware already implies ourselves so we don't need to have this ourselves in the sentence we can just say our problem is that we're too self-aware that's it you guys get that Any, que uh, any questions on this sentence so far? All right, so uh, another example. Let's say we have uh, I once believed and have faith in the power of love. Can you guys tell me if this has any redundancies in the sentence? And if so, what is uh, being redundant? Correct, good job guys. So we have had faith, but um, the phrase had faith repeats it because it has the same meaning as believed. When you believe something, you have faith in it, essentially. So I once believed, if you get rid of this part, and I once believed in the power of love, and that's it. It's not redundant anymore. You guys get that? All right. So I'm going to give you guys one to answer. So generic drugs are usually cheaper than when buying Name brand ones. All right. So can you guys tell me if there's any redundancies in this sentence? And if so, what are, uh, what is it or what, it, what are they? Good job, Layla. Right. 
right? This is a useless phrase. We don't need when buying. Generic drugs are usually cheaper than name brand ones, right? This one buying is just a useless phrase. You guys get that? All right, so. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a quick example. I want you guys to tell me if there are any redundancies, and if so, what are they? There you Good job, Ria. That's essentially it. I'm gonna quickly change color because that's white. Uh, I just changed to this. The plane that had crash landed was found at the location of New Hampshire. We don't need at the location, right? We could just have. Uh, let me turn this white again. The plane that had crash landed was found in New Hampshire, right? You guys get that? How that's a useless phrase the, at the location of when it's already said at, at New Hampshire in New Hampshire. That's true, Rhea. Because they're usually, usually these redundant phrases have to do like with location, like where it says at the location of New Hampshire, where it's useless. Do you guys, do you get that? Your teacher's right. They're most often going to be around prepositional phrases or in prepositional phrases. All right. Any questions on this so far? All right, uh, gonna give you guys one more example. All right, so Uh, I want you guys to just tell me if there are any redundancies, and if so, what are they? Uh, all right. Good job, guys. By means of is redundant. You don't need it. Change the color, so you don't need it. Lindsay completed the hundred mile trail uh, by bike. All right. All right. So it seems like you guys got this in the bag. Any questions on redundancy?
All right, so uh, next thing we're going to go over is parallelism. And parallelism has to do with the structure of a sentence. So basically, uh, let's say we have the sentence, I like flying. Actually, yeah, flying planes, riding trains. and to drive automobiles. Do you guys like see this awkwardness here to drive? This makes the whole like sentence awkward and not uh, flu uh, like fluid, right? And the reason it's not is because it's not parallel. This to drive makes this sentence uh, not parallel. And this has to do with the structure of the sentence. So let's say we, and we have here like flying, we have riding, and then we have to drive. That's just going to make it awkward and incorrect. So we have to keep it consistent. What are we going to do here? We just make this and driving automobiles. And that keeps the sentence consistent and parallel. Do you guys get that? So I'm going to give you guys a quick few questions uh, on this, and then we'll go to the next topic if you guys don't have any issues with it. All right. So let's go over this. I want you guys to tell me if you find any um, inconsistencies within the sentence, and if so, what are they? Yeah. All right. So you guys are going. It. So we could we could actually make two. We can do two. Uh, we can change it two ways. But the easiest way is to just to get rid of the two over here. My tasks today are to file for divorce, burn my house down, and start over. We don't have to inc uh, add the two uh, here because then there's no two over here. That's an inconsistency. Or we can have two here. We can have two here, and we can have two here. My tasks today are to file for divorce to burn my house down, and to start all over. We can do either of those two. Both of those would be correct. Do you guys get that? All right, so let's go, uh, let's go over one more problem. And same thing with the last one. Tell me if there's any inconsistencies in the sentence. And so what are they?
All right, so yeah, okay. You guys fixed that at the end. It's not silent, it's silently. Since this is quickly, we have to have this as get rid of the being and have this as silently. You can't say quickly and silent, right? It has to be consistent and parallel, so it's silently. Oh, sorry. All right. All right, it seems like you guys got that. Any questions on parallelism? All right, seems not. So what we're gonna do now is just I'm I've recently been just like uh, following the Pomodoro the uh, method, which is 25 minutes studying, five minute break. So we'll just have a five minute break now, just so you guys uh, we can make sure you guys retain all the information we're giving you, and you guys are uh, working efficiently to study. So we're gonna take a five minute break now. And yeah, Rhea, it is, it's pretty good. So we're going to take a five minute break now and we'll be back. All right.
All right, we are back. You guys ready to get uh, get going? How was your guys' five-minute break? Good, good. That's a good idea. Water is great. All right, so let's get into the next topic, which what which is pronoun reference and. If you're in high school, which you should be, um, pretty sure you guys know what a pronoun is. Pronoun replaces a noun. To make a sentence less repetitive and confusing. So there are two rules for pronouns, which is one, it replaces a noun. And the second one, uh, a singular noun. must go with a singular pronoun. This applies to plural, this applies to plural nouns and pronouns as well. All right, so let's let me show you something real quick. Let's say we have let's say we have to avoid a ticket. Alice told the police that Alice didn't realize Alice was pressing harder on the accelerator pedal because Alice had gained forty pounds in the past two months. You see how this is all repetitive and confusing and redundant. And all these Alice's are just really annoying. And you can just repeat, and instead of using Alice, we can just put these with she, right? Alice told the police that she didn't realize she was pressing hard onto the salary pedal because she had gained 40 pounds. It's less annoying than saying Alice so many times. You guys get that? So uh, I'm going to give you guys a quick list of pronouns so you guys can remember them. Uh, you guys, I'm pretty sure you guys would have already uh, familiar size with these. But if you have not, here you go. So this is pronouns right here. Subject pronoun, he, she, it. Then there's a plural version, which is they. Object pronouns, her, him, it, them. Possessive pronouns, hers, his, its, theirs. Possessive adjective pronouns, her, his, its, their. Relative pronouns, this, that, which, these, those. Reflexive pronouns, himself, herself, itself, themselves. All right. So uh really that's mainly all i have to tell you guys just to familiarize with these and make sure you guys understand uh like when to when to apply pronouns uh so basically i'll just give you some examples to work on so let's say we have Let's say this. Do you guys think there's any wrong uh, wrong usage of pronouns? And if so, where uh, where is it? And what should it be replaced by in this sentence? Correct. Good job, Ria. What should be replaced by?
uh, it would be, it would be them, right? Drunk with beer bottles in both hands, Michael slid and dropped them on the rug. Beer bottles. We're referring to that, so it has to be them. You get? Do you get that? So I'm going to give you guys another example. All right. So a good chef always, I'm sorry, always takes good care of their equipment. All right. So what do you guys, do you guys think there's any incorrect usage of pronoun references? And if so, what are they and what should they be replaced by? Are you sure there is singular, Rhea? No, you guys are both incorrect. Yep, that's correct, Ryan. His or her. Because there is plural. We have to use one that replies to a good chef. Takes care of his or her. This is singular. All right. Rhea and Anya, do you guys get that? Because the problem was with yours, Anya, is that you're changing equipment, equipment to equipment, but what... Uh, there was there or his or her to be exact was referring to was a good chef. It wasn't referring to the equipment. So it has to be his or her. You guys get that? All right. So anybody have any questions? on this topic. So we're going to go on to tenses now. Tenses are really something you should be familiar with by now. I, most people go over them in middle school. But here's a quick list of tenses I'm going to give you guys. And they're uh, per past perfect and present perfect aren't tested directly on the SAT, but you should be familiar with them. And you have to be familiar with uh, with identifying when a tense is used incorrectly and how to fix it. So I'm going to give you guys some uh, problems real quick. So let's say we have the right example. So let's say we have the end of World War II came when German forces surrender in Berlin and Italy. The problem is with this sentence is that this is present. Forces surrender. But the end of World War II, how long did that happen? 
this is in history. So it has to be a past uh, tense here. So this has to be surrendered. All right. You guys get that? So let me give another problem. Let's say we have Let's say we have, when Columbus and his crew discovered America in 1492, many Indian tribes welcomed them graciously. Can you guys tell me if there's anything wrong in the sentence? And if so, what should we change it to? Yeah, that's correct, Ria. You guys got that right away. Nice. Again, this is in the past. Columbus and his crew, 1492 especially tells you, many Indians welcomed. This is in past, so this has to be past too. Welcomed. Now welcome. All right. Let's see another one. To create the bracelet. Jane carefully slipped beads onto the band and then had twisted it into a circular shape. So what do you guys think? If, uh, if there are any changes required, what is it going to be? Correctria will be twisted. To create the bracelet, Jane carefully slipped beads onto the band and then twisted it into a circular shape. You don't need to have had twisted. All right. Do you guys get that? Any questions on, on uh, tenses? Wee wee. <laughs> All right, I'll give you guys uh, a few more questions. This time, multiple choice questions. All right. So, last year the teacher had chosen the most difficult textbook, and the class average dropped steadily throughout the semester. Semester. What do you guys think the answer will be to this? B. Good job. Can't be had chosen. Last year, the teacher chooses. Can't because this is in the past. Last year, the teacher choosing. That can't either. It has to be chose. All right? I'll give you guys one more. All right, tell me what you guys think the answer is.
Maria, that is incorrect. The answer to this is B. Reason being that when we have the uh, called the American people to stand, the, we need the idiom on because when it, when we say called on, we're basically it means to demand someone to do something, right? So he called on the American people to stand up for the freedom, equality, and justice, and that's a, pr a correct idiom. We don't have – he called the American people. So A is incorrect. Every other thing has to do with tenses. But this um, – the b difference between A and B have to do with the idioms. Do you guys get that? No, I said Maria. <laughs> I said Maria. Sorry, Ria. All right, any questions? On tenses? All right, seems not. So let's get into the final topic, which is going to be, oh, wait, not the final. My bad. <laughs> let's second to final. So this is going to be commas, dashes, and colons all right so basically punctuation all right so first thing we're going to go over is the semicolon and what is the semicolon used for it's used to conjoin two independent clauses to make one sentence to make a con uh yeah to make one sentence so it, it has the same rules as a uh, period where we have to have an independent clause clause before and after a semicolon. All right, so let's say we have I love the game of basketball. However, I don't play it myself. It's perfectly fine right there. I love the game of the basketball. That's an independent clause. A clause that can st uh, stand on its own. And however, I don't play it myself. Again, another independent clause. And it's conjoining that sentence, so it works perfectly. It's better than a period. All right? Uh, another thing that you... A uh, quick trick that you guys should know is that on the SAT, the semicolon and periods are treated the same. So if there's a choice where, let's say, we have the same exact punctuation in a choice, but like A is no change. And, you know, that's going to be definitely wrong. Like, not, not like, based on process of elimination, you know, no, uh, no change is wrong. Just looking at the sentence. Then we have something like uh, blah, 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 semicolon, blah, blah, blah. And then we have C with the same exact words and same exact punctuation, period, blah, blah, blah. And D, blah, 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 blah colon, uh, blah, 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 comma, whatever. Whatever this is. We can cross out B and D using process elimination because they're going to be treated the same. But you have to make sure they have the same exact words and the same exact punctuation throughout the rest of the sentence if it's a semicolon and it's like words and then a comma here you can't treat these the same because there may need to be a comma here so you can't cross out c and b there but if it's not there and they're the same words same punctuation the only difference is the semicolon and the period between the two you can eliminate those two do you guys get that that's a quick trick i like to use on the sat all right do you guys get the use of a semicolon and like this quick uh, tip I just gave you? All right, cool. So I'm gonna give you a quick question. Let's see, let's say we have this sentence. A platter was filled with berries, crackers, and cheese, right? Do you guys think there's any uh, incorrect uses of the semicolon there? 
And if so, what is it? Correct. This here, the platter was filled with berries, comma crackers. That's not done. That's not done with the sentence. That's not an independent clause. And cheese? No, it's not an independent clause either. Can't a col, uh, semicolon can't work there. Just replace it with a comma to continue the list. You guys get that? Oh, yeah, you guys got that all right. All right, good job. All right. So. I'm going to skip the comma because there are a lot of uses. Probably the most use is out of any of the other uh, piece, uh, types of punctuation. So I'm just going to go straight to the dash. We'll come back to the comma after. So the dash. So there's two purposes for the dash. One being to set off and emphasize Set off and emphasize interrupting phrases or in between top thoughts. So let's say we have this sentence. This is an example of it being used correctly. Just give me one second. So let's say we have all of our quit kitchen equipment from the steel pans used for sauces to the premium grade oven had to be sold to cover our losses. This is a, uh, this is just a, uh, in between phrase, right? Or in a interrupting thought. It's kind of, you can think of it as unnecessary information from the sentence. If you cancel this out, if you cross this out, the sentence is still a sentence, right? It's not an uh it's not a dependent clause because you need an independent clause to be um, to be an entire sentence. If you cross this out, it's still a sentence. All of our kitchen equipment had to be sold to cover our losses. So that's how you know that it's okay to put this here, that it's used correctly, because it's still a sentence when you cross this out, and this is just an interrupting phrase. You guys get that? All right. So let's say, okay, so let's just get to the second rule. Or the second use, sorry. The second use is to signal. Okay. Sorry. To signal a list statement or additional detail. All right, so let's say we have this sentence. The city is full of people you would never meet in my hometown. Bums, actors, models, the crazy, the oddly dressed. This is an additional detail that you don't even need for the sentence and it's just giving you more information, correct? I don't know why it's not letting me switch colors anymore but it's just additional uh, information it's not giving you something necessary to the sentence because if we got rid of this information here the sentence still stands on its own perfectly fine you guys get that so this is just uh you can uh, identify this as uh, additional information all right so i'm going to give you guys a few questions uh, so 
I'm gonna type, my keyboard is a bit loud. So if you guys hear that, that's just me typing. I'm gonna type out this sentence. You guys think there should be a, a dash here and if so where should it be keyboard asmr Before and after 154, correct. When my teacher found out the cookies I was hiding, all 154 of them, I'll type it out. All 154 of them, she ate them on the result. Because look, this is just additional information that we don't really need. Otherwise, the sentence stands on its own. You guys get that? So uh, next thing, I'm just going to go over the colon. So the colon is mainly used to um, direct attention to a list. Sorry, my handwriting is bad. Direct. To list a noun phrase um, to another independent clause that's clarifying something. So those are the main, that's the, these are the main uses for a colon. And the rule for the colon is that uh, there has to be, to be an independent clause before it. Doesn't matter what's after it, but before it has to be an independent clause. All right, so let's uh, let me give you guys an example. A classic Benedict breakfast should include the following ingredients. You see, this phrase before the colon here is a uh, independent clause. It's just directing attention to this list that they're about to give: poached eggs, English muffins, bacon's, and hollandaise sauce. This part is not an independent clause, but it's perfectly fine because we all we need, the only rule is that we have an independent clause before the clause, right? You guys get that? All right, I'm going to give you another tip that is similar to the semicolon period. So let's say we have uh, a sentence and the choices are A, no change. B, uh, blah, 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 semicolon, blah, 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 uh, comma, let's say. C, blah, 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 colon, blah, 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 and D, blah, 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 dash, M dash, blah, 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 all right? So let's say, well, if we have this, 
if we know that no change is incorrect just based on process of elimination and we see b c and d since a d and b have a colon and uh since the only difference between uh c and d is a colon and a dash we can eliminate those two because they essentially have the same uh, usage they're directing attention to a list so we can automatically cross out d and c and get our answer as b using process of elimination do you guys get that but again as as it was for the semicolon and period tip there has they have to have the same exact wording and have the same exact uh punctuation everywhere and the only difference can be a colon and a dash to be sure to be 100 percent sure you can cross both of them out all right Uh, another thing is that a dash can take place of colon, as I said here, but a colon cannot take a place of a dash. So let's say, like earlier, we had all 154 of them. We can't write this. For the reason being that this inside here is not an independent clause. All 154 of them, that's not an independent clause, and a colon has to be there. A dash can be replaced by a colon, but you can't put like... I mean, no, a colon, uh, colon can be replaced by a dash, but a dash cannot be replaced by a colon. So this would still have to be like that. You guys get that? All right. So it seems like you guys got that. Now we're going to have the, uh, the most used and most tricky uh, punctuation, which is going to be commas. And we'll actually get back to that after this five minute break. It's been 30 minutes and we're going to, again, we're using the Pomodoro thing, making sure you guys can most of, uh, get the most out of this class. So we're going to have a five minute break and we'll be back.
All right, we are back and we will be finishing this in this last uh, time interval. How was your guys' break? Uh, all right. Can you guys hear me? All right, cool. So uh, let's just get right into commas. They have the most usage. So uh, the first usage of commas are uh, to use them. Okay, wait, I'll just delete that. After an introductory phrase, or modifier. All right, so let's say we have this sentence. Although he's lactose intolerant, he likes to eat pizza for lunch. Where will we put a comma here? I'm gonna put it right here. Can I change my color? Okay, it's this gross kind of color, but. Although he's lactose intolerant, comma, he likes to eat pizza for lunch. We have to put a comma after this introductory phrase, although he's lactose intolerant. Do you guys get that so far? That's correct, or yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, that's one use. Another one is to set, oh, wrong color, separate three or more items in a series. Most of you know this. So we have hobbies included jumping off planes, crashing helicopters, and eating jellyfish. We have to put a comma here before the and. Reason being, that's how series uh commas work with the series uh, it's not letting me change the color okay i guess i'll just do this and you guys got that all right cool so can i change this back all right so that's the other use another one is to us set off non restrictive set off non restrictive or non essential elements. So let's say we have. Great white sharks, the most fearsome creatures of the sea, are actually less dangerous than they appear. What's the problem with this is that this is, uh, there's no like pause. And I'm trying to change the color. All right. The great, great white sharks, comma, the fearsome creatures of the sea. If imagine if we cross this out, since it's quote unquote non essential information, if we cross this out, the sentence still stands by itself. Great white sharks are actually less dangerous than they appear. This is just non-restrictive or non-essential information. And we're going to set that off by using two commas. You guys get that? Oh, okay. Bye, Ria. Hope you enjoyed. So uh, do you guys get this? The use of non-restrictive and non-essential elements. All right, and the last use of uh, commas. Oh, why did it come down? 
is to set off transitions and intervene phrases. Right? So let's say we have this sentence. Some animals are nocturnal. For example, the coyotes hunt during the night. We have to, this is a transition, for example. So we have to put a comma after, for example. Do you guys get that so far? This is just one example. Another example we have is uh, when I told my parents I was pregnant, they were, to my relief, supported and understanding. So we have the, I was pregnant. They were, comma, to my relief, comma, supportive and understanding. Do you guys get why I put the commas here? To my relief is uh, non-essential. And this is just to intervening phrase. They were. So we just set it off by commas. Do you guys get that? All right, cool. See what you do. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for commas. Does anybody have any questions with anything we've went over so far at all? The uh, the redundancy, parallelism, pronoun references, commas, dashes, and colons. Any questions so far? All right, cool. Uh, so we're going to do our last thing. Our last topic for the day, and that's going to be apostrophes. Wrong color. Zoom in a bit. Don't know why it gets so thin. Okay, apostrophes. All right. So let's say we so. There are different types of uses for apostrophes. Well, there's not different types of uses. The reason, actually, yeah, there are two reasons. Sorry. Uh, one is for possession. And the second one is for contractions. I'll explain those both to you in a, uh, real quick. So, for example, let's say we have the cats hat is on the floor. We have an apostrophe S to uh, uh, indicate that it's the cat's hat. It's uh, It belongs to the cat, showing possession. All right. So the way we show possession using uh, uh, apostrophes differs based on uh, how many they are. So if there's singular noun versus plural. So if we have we're going to put a comma uh, apostrophe s for a singular subject and for a plural subject we're going to put s apostrophe so let's say we have uh both players jerseys We're soaked with sweat, all right? So based on what I just said, what do you guys think, uh, what apostrophe should be used or what should this uh, players turn into so that we're, uh, that we're using apostrophes correctly? Players, right? Because there's multiple players. It's a plural um, subject, so we're gonna put Play first. You guys get that?
All right, so uh, the second usage of apostrophes are for contractions. And I'll just give you a quick list instead. So a contraction really is just a replacement for like bigger words, like it's is stands for it is. So I'll just send a quick list. You guys familiar, uh, familiarize yourself with these? And you have to know the differences between uh, a few of these contractions versus possessives, which a few people mess up. So uh, we'll go over them. So first one is it's versus it's. Let's say we have uh, the sentence poster fell from it's or it's spot on the wall. Which one are you guys going to choose? It apostrophe s or it's? Good job, Brian. It's the second one because that it is possessive. While this one is a contraction standing for it is. The poster fell from it is spot on the wall? Makes no sense. It's spot on the wall. It owns that spot on the wall. It possesses that spot on the wall. All right. The next one uh, is there versus there versus there. So the difference in meaning is this is a con uh, contraction for they are. This there is possessive. And this there is like a location. So Jacob put the water bottle over there. We would use this there. Um, the students passed their homework in late. They own the homework. It's their homework. So it's there. And they are, would be like, they, they're going to meet us at the restaurant. They are going to meet us at the restaurant. Right? You guys get that? If you, uh, a quick tip I like to tell people is that whenever they're uh, on a question with, that deals with contract, contractions, uh, always read the sentence with the on uh, the uncontracted version to see if it makes sense. So like if we're writing, reading, they're going to meet us at the restaurant and it's this there, read it as they are going to meet us at the restaurant because that just helps us, uh, that just helps us identify if the uh, correct contraction or if we need to use the possessive or the location version of that word. You guys get that? All right, and the last one is gonna be who versus whose. This one being possessive, this one being the contraction. So let's say, uh, who's that sitting by themselves? Who is that, right? Who's that person sitting by themselves? It's who, uh, if we would use this one, because it's a contraction for who is. Who is that person sitting by themselves? I have a friend whose mother is an accountant. It's their mother. They possess that mother. So it has. To, we have to use this who's. You guys get that one? I'm going to give you guys a quick uh, example. I'm going to give you guys two quick examples. So I want you guys to answer what uh, will we change here in this sentence. And answer in the chat, please.
So, okay. Uh, I said that. Uh, I'll answer that in a little bit later. So the book has a cool picture on its cover. If we would get rid of this and change it to its, right? Because it's it's that's cover. It possesses that cover. So it's going to use the possessive its. All right. Now we're going to uh, do one more, and then I'll answer Layla's question, because that's actually a very good question. All right. Uh, can you guys tell me what's wrong with uh, this? Oh, uh, Ryan, that you don't need a contraction there. That's actually useless. So he is the actor who's who's most known for his role for in Batman. He possesses that. That just uh, it doesn't make sense when you say whose role. Instead, change it to who is most known for their role. So we're gonna use a contraction. Who is is correct. So this is going to be who is. All right. Now answering Layla's question. In addition to the uh, apostrophe used with possessive pronouns, could I also ask what happens if we want to, ma to make a possessive pronoun from the surname that ends with as, such as Dickens? So to answer your question, it doesn't matter what you use. You can do apo uh, S apostrophe, apostrophe S, it does not matter. Or like Dickens, like that, or just that. does not matter. As long as you're not doing this. If their name is Dickens, not Dickens, as long as you're not doing that, it's fine. It can be S apostrophe or S apostrophe S. All right. Does that answer your question, Layla? Yeah. All right. No problem. So that's it. Does anybody have any questions over apostrophes, commas, colons, dashes? Uh, tenses, pronoun reference, parallelism, or redundancy? All right, seems like you guys don't have any problems. Before we uh, end this, I'm going to ask you guys to fill out this uh, ending survey. I want to see how you guys like the event. And if you have any questions, you guys can go ahead and ask in the Discord server. This video will be recorded and posted on YouTube if you guys want to refer to this later. All right. And then after filling this out, you guys are free to leave. Yeah, see you around.